Hi! So for those of you who have been writing for quite a while, then you know that there are really different ways that you might approach starting a story. Some of you will write out a sort of treatment of the plot where you are describing everything that happens and you write a detailed description of each character and you know exactly what happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end, and everywhere in between. And other people might just start writing as soon as they get the idea. And some people might go for a slightly balanced approach, other people might put together a work from various pieces of writing that they've had over the years. Well, in my case, with my third and most recent book, Young in Disguise, it's been kind of a combination effort. So from the beginning, I knew that I wanted it to be about a boy who dressed up as a girl to escape his life in a castle because of course those are my eight-year-old obsessions, which were disguises castles, running away, and medieval type fantasy situations, so I thought this would be the perfect thing, but it turned out to be much more because uh, this at uh, this time the Iraq war was going on and uh, President Bush was in power and so it became this kind of combination of at some points political satire. I would hesitate to call the entire book a political satire. I think that there are parts that make fun of specific people that you can definitely identify. So, you know, there's a chapter where uh, a village is about to start a war because they're running out of cooking oil, which is a fairly thinly veiled reference, I'm sure you can tell. It's an interesting book. So I started writing it when I was 8, and you might wonder, well, you're 13 now, what was the big delay? The big delay was me editing and re-editing and re-re-re-editing <laughs> about... 15, 20, countless times essentially. So if you're so inclined, you can go to tinyurl.com slash young in disguise uh, to find out more about the book and maybe purchase it and support a young writer's aspirations, my eight-year-old self. Um, but when you read this book, you'll also learn a little more about, uh, I guess, alternate ways to go about um, conflict and some things that you might apply to your own life. It's kind of a combination of coming-of-age story, some political commentary, nothing that I'm indoctrinating anybody. Uh, and so this is what it says on the back. Eldire, crown prince of the kingdom of Anaparia, has never exactly fit in with his war-loving father nor his athletic brother. But when his father decides that Eldire should go to war against rebellious peasants, the prince rebels by running away from the only home he's ever known. Changing his identity completely in one very strange disguise, he braves dry deserts, dank dungeons, and disrespectful dwarves in an effort to find his own path. So it is very coming of age, but there's also uh, a little tiny element of romance. Not at all. Like, pretty much toward the end of the book. Remember, this was an eight-year-old, so who was writing this, so really grossed out. But uh, it's, it's sweet. And the... Another thing for those educationally minded, well, we're all educationally minded, um, there is a glossary, so when I am using weird words like ptarmigan, I think there's a ptarmigan in here. I was obsessed with the bird. I had to put a ptarmigan in like every single book. Uh, if you want to find out what accoutrements are, or annexes of kingdom, or an antechamber, or a baronet, bourgeoisie, bungalow, whatever, is in the book that you don't know what it means, you can go to this glossary and find the meanings of all the words in the context in which they appear. So honestly, this is probably worth it just for the glossary alone uh, and the weird words that appear in there. And for those of you who are wondering why the Yang in Disguise reference, this seems to have nothing to do with uh, ancient China or, or the Yin Yang, what, what is the deal with this? Well, uh, originally I was thinking of naming it the boy who became a girl because of the way Eldire disguised himself as by dressing up as a girl, right? But then I decided that would probably get me into political hot water with cross-dressing and stuff, which was definitely not the point of the book, and there's um, none of that. So I thought Yang in Disguise would be more appropriate. For those of you who are familiar with the Yin Yang symbol, uh, then yang is supposed to be like the, the male side, and so yang in disguise is sort of a reference to that. Um, beyond that, I don't really have any sort of religious or spiritual message there, but I thought it was kind of appropriate as the title. And then this beautiful cover uh, was, funnily enough, designed by my tutor, Felisa Rogers. So she was... Um, She's a really accomplished artist, actually, and she just did this cover for us on, like, this big piece of paper, and we scanned it in at a FedEx and <laughs> photoshopped it a little bit so the paper wouldn't show, but it was really amazing to see the work, the process that goes into creating a final product, the 20 re-edits, the working this out, writing the synopsis for the back, creating the illustration, you know, there's all of this work that goes into a book, and when you get it at a bookstore or you hold it in your hands, you really don't think about all that. So as a writer, I've been incredibly privileged to be able to see it firsthand 
and I'm going to read you a tiny little bit of the beginning of Young in Disguise. I watched a pillbug amble along the dirt-filled nooks in the palace garden's pebbled path, retreating into a damp little hollow under the shade of a magnolia tree. I remembered the days when I could do that in a larger world, hide in all the passageways, exploring another world, until my father's wrathful footsteps retreated in the distance. Although I was too old now to hide from my responsibilities, I hadn't quite gotten over the habit. The serene garden provided an excellent place to hide from my latest failed Latin test. I had not prepared a detailed essay on the glory of war in Latin, nor did I want to. War was, in my opinion, quite awful. My Greek and Latin tutor, a wizened and hunchbacked man with an eye patch and peg leg, thought differently, however, and I was soundly birched. I personally preferred to spend the hours reading the comic and tragic plays of Sisley and his thoughts on the curiously human woes and frailties of the gods. As the good Dr. Sisley had written a treatise on the atrocities of war some time ago, I was forbidden from reading his work, lest I be infected with pacifist ideas. So, as you can see, this person is growing up in a really interesting environment here, and, uh, sorry, that is, yes, a phone ringing. <laughs> well, um, this is, the complication is that he's a prince, he's an heir to a kingdom, and this is a world where fighting and war is sort of just the way of land. So what is he going to do? How does he deal with this? And, uh, what does he finally do at the end of the book? Young in Disguise, tinyurl.com slash disguise for more information about it. Hope you've enjoyed. Thanks.